Ok, vamos a empezar con uh, grabar. Uh, tenemos una pregunta uh, que se trata de gold list, the gold list method. And the question is, if I choose to take a verb tense and say put, uh, take one day's list and make half of them preterite, half of them imperfecto so that I get that yin yang, that 50-50. How do I label those on the answer side, right? Do I list them as dijo, decir, said, preterite, or decía, uh, said, uh, imperfecto? Uh, you know, I would list it. I would suggest you can do that, or you can so that you get start to hook it more into what it really means. List decía on your answer side as used to say or was saying. Because that's decía. Those are the situations in which you use decía. And the situation in which you use dijo is just said, mm -hmm. said, okay? So to get across that idea of event, evento, uh, versus habit or used to, was doing. It's a good idea because used to and was doing is really what that's the closest we get to that idea of imperfecto in English. And what you want to shoot for is, yeah, sure, knowing how to do the conjugation, but why the heck do I use this stinker? <laughs> yeah. Why do I even need this thing? Well, I need it if I want to say used to. Yeah, good idea. Oh, yeah, I'm just seeing in in um, Duolingo, they're using it as would. So and so would do something. Yes, to a certain extent. Okay. Yes, and, and they, they don't caveat. explain it, so everyone's you know writing comments about how confused they are. So um, um, I would say that's okay with a caveat. How many times do you if you're talking about? Your grandkids says, hey, grandma, grandpa, what was it like to have a phone with a cord? <laughs> cool. Are you more likely to say, what are you more likely to say? Well, we used to have a phone with a cord or our phone would have a cord. I'm more likely to say my phone used to have a cord. Mm -hmm. uh, would is correct, but here's the problem. Would can mean two different things in English. There's the problem. Yes. yes. And, there be, and now you're adding on another layer of interpreting if you use would. So would, um, okay, por ejemplo, um, uh, during monsoon, we would exercise only in the early morning. Durante uh, la temporada del monzón, uh, um, hacíamos ejercicio uh, por la mañana. Okay. Uh, we would do that, meaning we used to. But you could also ask somebody, if the temperature were nicer, would you exercise later in the day? And that would is not different, at yeah. all. It is what they call conditional, meaning, uh, so would. So the reason, reason I kind of caution against the would thing, even though, okay, it's correct, is this. We often use would in English to signal this is a hypothetical. If I were you, I would do this. And it means something that isn't really happening, but theoretically could. Well, yeah. And, and I think that all of the English speakers who are writing comments get that. And so they're confused at being forced to interpret something as meaning would right. when it so throws everything What off. do you want to do? You want to make your list. You want to make your list and then the little, the little answers that are on the other side, you want to make those English side answers 
represent the closest to how would you say that if you were speaking English, saying okay. the same idea. So you could label it as preterite or imperfect. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think it's more important for you to know, oh, wait, well, what's the situation I really use that in? And that gets more to the heart of why you're using that, that tense. Because what you want to do is to try to make it uh, the most natural way for you to bridge into, uh, you know, I'm tying this to context. And it's hard to tie it into context with a list of words. Hard, because you don't have in a list that true mm -hmm. context and a whole, you know, idea, a whole story. Uh, es buena pregunta, Federico. Fred, that is a really good question. Uh, and I'm going to start when I'm done with class tonight doing my, I, I, we're up to the point. I am now starting only on my first list. I'm going back. I'm going to revisit my first list. And I guarantee I'm only going to know 30% of those really, really super well. That's normal. Si, sí, Patricia. Um, what if you have two verbs with the same meaning? Would you put them as two entries? I mean, what do you have a recommendation? Uh, two. Oh, okay. Give me your, but, da, 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 dame tu, tu ejemplo. Give me your, your example. Well, I ran into something that I had to look up the verb to, for to beg. And there were two totally different words. I don't know which one I should use. So I just made two entries. I can't even remember what they are now. I just looked it up today to beg. Oh, okay. That I put Ooh. down. I was thinking more along different lines. The line I was thinking of is like, what if you want to say she was? Wow, now you got the problem of ser and estar, and is it preterite? Oh, uh, what a nightmare, but you know. Well, no, on the other end, it seems easier. You know, if one verb can mean different things. Yeah, one verb can mean different things. But what about things. if there's different, um, different verbs for the same? You're gonna have to con create some sort of context yeah. to identify it. Like bark in English, Blood. you would have to, bark of a tree oh yeah versus well, bark a noun a doggy sound a dog yeah yeah okay so something like that um would work okay i think i don't know if that answers your question perfectly well but, there were two verbs that i but for example you could have you could theoretically have something on your list like comenzar and empezar comenzar and empezar Right. I mean the same thing, but would you put yeah. two entries in them? Pat, Pat, what I would do with that what? is put one word on one day and the other word on a different day. A different list. Ah. Then you have to remember them separately. Okay. If you put True. them both on the same day, you might it might be easy to remember them though. I but, separated mine by about 10 spaces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's and even probably not good enough. Yeah. I and, did. And, <laughs> Even with comenzar and empezar, it's not very satisfactory to say, oh, label one as begin and one to start because now, I mean, you know, they they're two different them. words and they mean the same That's thing. That's a good idea. So I guess in the big picture, it doesn't really matter. What yeah. might matter is that, mm, okay, you know what? Empezar is conversationally probably a little more common than comenzar. Oh. Should you know both? Yeah, you know what? You probably should know that. Comenzar and empezar are equivalents, just like you know that start or begin. You know the meeting begins at such as at the meeting begins at ten. The meeting be, uh, the meeting starts at ten. Somebody's going to use whatever pops in their mind at that moment, right? And they're not going to be thinking, should I use start or should I begin? Nobody does that, but uh, probably they're the most natural inclination to what comes, what you spit out first is probably going to be empezar. But it's not incorrect to use the other one of comenzar. Yeah. So, okay, bien. Uh, otras preguntas. Hay otras preguntas. Any other questions about that, that gold list thing? I, 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 I have one, and it's going along with what Pat says. So I saw in one of uh, the videos something about talking about a glass. And I heard him uh, use vaso, vaso, and then I heard him use copa. 
And so I don't know what the difference oh, okay. to them are. Yeah. Okay. Buena pregunta. Okay. So, este es un vaso. Este es un vaso. Sí. sí. De, de agua con jugo. Mm -hmm. uh, bueno, a ver. Uh, un vaso. Un vaso es para beber. Mm -hmm. uh, um, glass in your window. Vidrio, sí. vidrio, glass, it's the material mm -hmm. in the window, but they use a different word for that. So vaso, glass, cannot be used for glass in a window. Right. Okay. And then you've got the thing of, oh, there are different kinds of glasses. Mm -hmm. So uh, un vaso um, versus una copa. Mm -hmm. A copa is a wine glass. A copa, oh, okay. a copa, you could think of it as a, a goblet. Okay. Okay. Copa, you could think of as a goblet, a wine goblet, a snifter, perhaps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, we've got different words for those things too. Snifter, wow, that's pretty specialized. Uh, you know, wine glass, shot glass. We got all kinds of glasses. Esteban. Taza también. Taza, I thought was cup. Yeah. Oh, Tassa is cup. Tassa is cup. Well, yeah. looking looking at measuring for cooking, mm. I found both Tassa and Vaso being used for cup in different oh. places, different, Ooh. you know, authors or whatever. So, you know, but the measurement, for usually it's Tassa. Usually, but you know, if somebody said, you know, uh, uh, dissolve something in a glass of water, they'll definitely use um, vaso, but yeah, um, tasa is generally used for a cup. So yeah, we've got all these nuances with with words that can be difficult. I, I found something interesting on this website called tellmeinspanish.com. And it's a list of when you use tasa for certain beverages and when you use vaso for certain beverages and when you use it says cup. Well, I guess that would be copa. They didn't spell it out there. But anyway, it was a little chart of for Tasa, you use chocolate, tea, coffee, fruit punch, uh, or yeah. some kind of corn flour drink. All right. Uh, well, and are, Tasso, you gonna, and are you going to be talking about that? Well, I don't know. But I mean, here was this <laughs> somebody is telling you which one to use. And I'm like, wow, si. you use vaso on. for cerveza and leche and jugo and uh, is that, a, that, that is true okay so uh yeah so really this becomes a kind of a, a big big ball of uh vocabulary uh but we do it in english as well um so okay see uh you know that's uh, what should the the mental picture that should come up when somebody says that's for you is a teacup or a coffee cup yeah Basso should be a tall glass of water. Okay, it could be a short glass. You know, you could even take it down to the little size of uh, uh, people talk about going out for a drink. Go out for a drink. Uh, let's go out and like toss a few back. All right. Quieres tomar una copa? You know, nobody's going to tell you, even though it comes in a glass, un vaso de vino. Nobody's going to use un vaso de vino. A glass mm. of wine. That's the there ain't nobody in this world going to say that to you. <laughs> and it's it's not on the vaso list. <laughs> yeah, is it not? Yeah, I know. Vaso, si. Un vaso de vino. They're, they're not going to use that. They're going to use una copa. You know, or, or un vino, you know. Yeah, uh, it's, it's all it's all alcohol. Un vino, un, una copa. Una copa, yeah. una copa. And, you know, it's, it's understood uh, uh, that, you know, una copa. It's a drink, a little drinky poo. Or if it's like a shot kind of thing, which sure is not the same thing as a glass mm. of wine, right? It might be un trago. Trago, trago means a swallow. And what are you supposed to down that shot in? Boom, mm -hmm. one swallow, yeah? Un trago. So some people use un trago. Quieres tomar un trago? Uh, 
it won't necessarily mean you want to have a shot, but they're probably talking more about, you know, some kind of a hard liquor as opposed to, you know, just a beer. And then there are different terms used in, in different countries for different kinds of beers too. So yeah, you can kind of get into a rat's nest of things, but you know, de define it, define it as it's useful to you. Define it as it is useful to you. And if it's more important for you, Fred, to know that it's preterite or imperfect, define that. But if it's more important for you to know, oh, I use this to say used to versus just did it, define it that way. So do what's useful for you, okay. which is why you, this is very, you can really customize. Here's, here's, here's another measurement question. So mm -hmm. I have this Spanish cookbook and it, it'll say things like, cucharadita and cucharada or cuchar well maybe I cucharada. Si, si. cucharada but sometimes it says cda period or cdas period and i'm wondering what the abbreviation is for is it for cucharada um, i'll have to check that because i've never really thought about the abbreviations tablespoon versus teaspoon yeah, yes, like we have TBS like yes, versus. But, yes. but in this in this particular cookbook, it was spelled out almost every time, and it looked like maybe they abbreviated it when they were running out of space. And <laughs> that's probably right. true. for me looking at it, I I couldn't be sure what it meant. So yeah, um, I will look that up and find that for you. I will find that out for you. Uh, you know, cuchara, cuch uh, and, and knowing word that words have families is always, always helpful. There are families of words. So I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but por ejemplo, um, uh, cuchara, spoon, right? But when you're using spoon, um, you know, they'll add little things to the end of cuchara to okay. indicate more specific things about that spoon. So cucharon, Cucharon would be a great big spoon, like a ladle size spoon. Cucharon would be like a great big heap and great big on on the end makes it great big or sometimes ugly and not great looking. I, you know, it kind of depends on the situation, the word you're applying the on to. Um, uh, mujeron on, on the end of a mujer is not a compliment. <laughs> it means, you know, a great big stocky, woman that's built like a tank <laughs> so it ain't no compliment you know mujeron is not saying nice things it's not just saying wow she's really tall uh-uh no okay <laughs> uh so you know slap that person's face yeah uh if they call you that but um cuchara we get to um cucharada tablespoon usually and cucharadita ita ita on the end to make it a teaspoon yeah so I'll look up abbreviations though, because yeah, how do you abbreviate that and make that clear? Yeah, see that, that would be helpful because, you know, obviously we know what they are in English, but yeah, when you don't know the words well enough and you, I, I mean, I thought if I, if I had it written out, I could look it up to see maybe what it means, but when it's abbreviated, I don't even know how to look it up. So, uh, yeah, um, ooh, I may have found, ooh. Okay. Oh, oh, here we go. Aquí vamos. Uh, C, D, T like Thomas, A would be cucharadita, teaspoon. Okay. Uh, C, D, A, cucharada, tablespoon. So for teaspoon, it's got to okay. have a T like it's Thomas. Have a tea in it. Yeah. Cucharadita. Okay. Uh, uh, C D A C D A will be the big one. There you go. Wow, that was easy to look up. Okay. Really well, I couldn't find it. I just went out looking in the right well, place. Well, because when I type this in, it goes into my 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 forum things where people say, "Oh, I know how to," because yeah, they're native speakers and they, mm -hmm. they give you an answer. Although sometimes they don't agree with each other too. So that can happen. Okay. A ver. Uh, bueno. Uh, hay, hay otra pregunta o no? Uh, this is silly. No, that's ¿Cómo fine. Se dice, ¿Cómo se dice drinky poo? <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> you use that. Pat, you use drinky poo. 
<laughs> I, I just ran into something in Duolingo and it was the word A B U E. No, A. Yeah, A B U E L, but without an ending on it. And they called it a grandfather. Is that common to drop an ending? Oh, or was it just a oh, yes. abuel? Weird. I've abuel. seen it. Oh, abuel. Abuel. I mean, it, it didn't have, uh, I was wondering, I thought that was someone's name until I looked at the translation. Maybe it's a typo. I, I wasn't yeah, sure. I was I, I've never about. seen it. Uh, you know, I've, um, um, you know, I've heard people use uh, uh, papi, mami, um, abuelita, abuelito, yes. uh, yayo, uh, you know, depending on the country you're in, there are different nicknames. Uh, I've never seen it abbreviated. That sure. Way. I was just, there was just something, I think I ran into it this week and it was like, oh, I thought that was someone's that, Spanish name. And then they, you see the translation. Yeah. Oh. I, I wouldn't rule out that that's, uh, that there are times be a when, typo. there are th times when things are dropped. Actually, you know, I'm vale la pena. This is kind of worth going into as a little, hmm. oh, why is that doing a new whiteboard? Is it not going to give me my old whiteboard? All right. Pat, did you say that was Duolingo? Yeah, I saw it in there somewhere. Yeah, I was. I I, I sometimes uh, do the conversations back and forth, and sometimes one of them calls the grandmother Abue, Able, Abue. Some, yeah, some nickname. Um, yeah, and it was in a. What is the conversation one called? I should know it. I do. The, the, the stories. Yeah, the stories, and I think oh. it was the character Lynn talking to the grandmother. Lucy. Yeah. Lynn and Lucy. <laughs> is it Lucy? Yeah. 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 Maybe it was Lucy. I get Lucy. all their names. Lucy's the grandma, I think. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, see, that's so exciting. <laughs> I was just yeah. I I just thought, well, that's weird. They didn't put all the letters in the word. I just thought, oh, well, maybe that's a common thing. I didn't know. Or it's well, just know. a nickname. Yeah, one one time she was talking to to the grandmother about something, and she called her like Abwe. Abwe. Of... Uh, yeah. You know. Okay, I can see that maybe happening, but um, um. Uh, you know, I, yeah, it depends. It depends sometimes, you know, but not all on, the time. On Google Translate, I just put in Abuel out of curiosity, and it mm -hmm. says grandfather. Oh, okay. Okay. I have no idea, but. No, no, okay. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's so like there grandpa. might be people like gramps. Grandpa. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are some words that typically might get shortened. Um, um, here and there, um, I'm just going to show you maybe one or two, uh, um, por ejemplo, ah, uh, ooh, peli, peli, uh, peli is short for película. Oh, okay. I've película, seen it. Película, movie, no? Mm -hmm. And there are people who will just shorten that to Peli. Um, so every once in a while you get some little words like that. So, you know, I guess it's not out of the realm of possibility that somebody could shorten abuelo or abuela, um, <laughs> kind of like they do with that. Uh, or, por ejemplo, uh, cole, or cole, perdón, cole, cole. Uh, vamos al cole, vamos al cole. And cole is, is often used as a short tag for colegio, oh. high school. Mm. You know, uh, ¿dónde, está, uh, ¿dónde está Oscar? Ah, Oscar está en el cole. Está en el cole, and, you know, he's at high school. Uh, bien, so you, you get little words like that that get abbreviated. Of course, one that uh, most people know is profe for... Uh, profesor or profesora, uh, but there are a lot of little words that get uh, cut in half, kind of essentially, <laughs> uh, like that. Y así es. That that can happen quite a lot. Okay. Uh, otra pregunta. Oh no. 
Sí o no? Sí o no? Uh, I, I want, uh, uh, I would really love for a lot of you to report back on about, don't like, calculate it, but you know, eyeball. Hey, first couple pages as you go back to that, you know, we're at the time where you can go back to page one. Uh, what kind of percentage did you remember? And, you know, that's cool. Let's see how that goes. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, vamos a practicar con, con uh, muchas cosas, hablando de las bebidas, hablando de la comida y todo así. I'm going to have our questions, but we'll have our, our questions up to uh, reference and uh, let you do some small group work on that. I do want to ask if you have any questions. Um, ¿Tienen ustedes alguna pregunta sobre las empanadas? Do you have any questions about what she used or talked about or anything? Well, you were, you were going to look up um, maíz precocida. For the, the corn flour seemed to be pre-cooked. Oh, I was. And I, uy, se me olvidó. Perdón. Uy. Mil perdones. Wow. Okay. Um, I need, I, se me olvidó. I completely forgot. Uh, I will see if I can find some information on that next week. Muchísimas gracias. Okay. I, because I saw in Anna and David video, also on empanadas, and they used the same precocida uh, pre for, the, for the corn. So obviously okay. it's a thing. Okay. Bien, sí, I'll see what I can. Muchas gracias. Ay, que si vergüenza soy yo. What a shameless <laughs> one I am, but I had forgotten that. Okay. Uh, bien. Um, hay otra pregunta. Any other question on this one or no? Uh, on, on the video, was it pretty clear? Kind of interesting, though, that everybody uses kind of a, a you know, a different or has a different take, uh, sure. you know, a little slightly different take on the same sort of recipe that that makes it kind of an interesting thing and you know most of it was stuff that you could understand for sure so um also kind of nice no ninguna pregunta no no question on those i mean they do did give us our uh, stuff okay let's jump into um our questions. Yeah, I say, wow, there are six of them. And I've got these. I can send this out in the groups. We're going to enlarge this uh, so that you can read them when you go into your smaller groups. And we're combining a couple of uh, vocabulary things along with just our general food talking. Um, conversation prompts uh, start with no me gusta mucho and un plato, uh, you know, name it, whatever it is. And if it is an actual English term, then, you know, use that if it cannot be translated because it might be that kind of thing. Uh, no me gusta mucho uh, el bistec de mi esposa. I don't like my wife's steak and tell why not, or whatever, lo que sea. Porque falta, porque falta, because it lacks. So what we're looking for here is that something lacks something, and it might be the recipe uh, uh, at a certain restaurant or a fast food chain or wherever. Um, no me gusta mucho, and I, oh, you know what? That might even be a gustan, depending on what you uh, need to, uy, a ver. Uh, no me gustan, it could be, but no me gusta mucho, un plato, uh, porque falta, because it lacks, and you're going to say what it's lacking, doesn't have enough spice, doesn't have enough sauce, something, algo, okay, uh, la franquicia de comida rápida, the fast food chain, uh, a uh, fast food chain that I prefer if you do fast food at all. Uh, la comida rápida que no me gusta para nada. 
y no me gusta para nada. Es muy común. This is a real common chunk of words and it always hangs together. And it means don't like at all. It adds in that para nada adds in the idea of not at all. And it makes something quite super negative, not at all, okay? Uh, ¿Cuáles son franquicias populares en tu barrio? What, what kind of chain set up? And it doesn't have to be for food, for anything, um, is popular in your general area. Si sí, en tu barrio, in your area. Uh, ¿Cuáles son las recetas que se hacen con carne desmechada? Here's another vocabulary thing. Carne desmechada es el término que usamos para pulled or shredded. ¿Ok? Um, ¿Cuáles son las recetas que se hacen? What are the recipes that are made? Are made, se hacen. Se hacen. Car uh, carne desmechada. Y uh, de dónde son? And where are these recipes from? Because they might be kind of particular to a certain part of Estados Unidos, okay? De dónde son estas recetas? Where are these from originally? De qué parte de Estados Unidos? Y por fin, ¿cuál es su bebida de preferencia? What is your beverage of choice? Por la mañana o con la cena? Uh, lo que sea. And those will all go out into the breakout rooms with you. So you can practice with your partners a little bit. Un poquito. Está bien. Sí. Bien. Vale. Ok. Um, hmm. Hmm. Me imagino que ustedes necesitan por lo menos 10 diez, diez minutos con seis preguntas, ¿no? 10 minutos es razonable, ¿no? Uh, bien. A ver, vamos a ver si tenemos cuatro grupos. Sí, vale. Bueno, ok. This will make sure that you've got about three people. There might be one or two of you that are in a group of two, but most of you are going to have three people in a group. Uh, and I will send this in once you hit your join button. <coughs> y, uy, ¿dónde está mi share? Compartir my share button. Aquí, aquí y bien. Vale. Aquí vamos. Here we go. Me imagino seis preguntas son muchas. Six questions, that's kind of a lot. So, entonces, sí. Entonces, ellos... Necesitan 10 minutos, me imagino, porque una persona tiene una opinión y hay otra persona que quizás no tiene la misma opinión uh, y tienen que discutir un poquito. Oh, Connie, were you not able to get in? Yeah, I'm trying. I'm having issues again with this. Okay. No I'll te preocupes. Don't worry. And it, Although I, I do want to check and see if you're, you're in a group. Oh no, there there is somebody else with it. This that person is not alone. Yeah, is there a way to put that back on? Because I don't see. I the, think the, I can. Let me let oh. me try to get you. Oh, three, two. Wow, that's interesting. Oh, hmm. Let me try to move you to a different group and see if that works. Okay. I think it's fine. Right, here we go. Let me try. Give it a go. And if it doesn't, you can practice with me. <laughs> ah, bien.
Ok. Nos quedan unos minutos. Ok. Pronto vienen más. We got more people coming in. Soon, muy pronto. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Aquí estamos. Sí. Yeah, there's a little lag, isn't there, when you jump back in. Jump out and jump out. There's a, jump in and jump out. There's always a little bit of a lag there. Así es. We'll have everybody else coming on in pretty soon. Probably a couple people finish. I was just telling Marlene that Dave and I have COVID right now. Oh, lo siento. Yeah. Uh, it's not uh, as bad as it could be, but it's, you know. Uh, yeah, they say the sore throat is real. Actually, there are a lot of people uh, yeah. who are emailing me all week. Well, the that's sore why throat I is pretty throat. intense. I'm going to cough or something. And that's how it started, is the, the sore throat. Yeah, and a couple of people emailed me that I'll watch, but I can't talk at all. Mm, so. mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, I talk that much. I might leave early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Lo siento. Okay. Bien, bien. Fantástico. Uh, quiere, quiero que ustedes con I want you guys to share some ideas that were uh, good or funny or fun ideas. Uh, algo interesante de lo que le gusta o no. Sí, sí me gusta ejercicio. Uh, uh, did you just say, did, did we like the exercise? Or? Uh, no, no, perdón. Sure. Quiero que ustedes compartan. I want you guys to share some ideas that you oh. came up with from the various questions here. Uh. So, por ejemplo, uh, un plato que uh, uh, no me gusta mucho. Por ejemplo, mi esposo, a uh, mi esposo no le gusta mucho. a uh, mi receta para una ensalada de pasta. Mm. Ah. Uh, no le gusta, no le gusta porque falta. Hmm, ¿Qué falta? Uh, no sé. <risa> es que le, uh, falta. Falta, uh, falta sabor. Falta un. Uh, uh, uh. Eh, Falta sabor, Ay, no sé, no sé, pero no le gusta. Okay, algo más, anything else interesting, something you really don't, don't like? Ah. Don't like grandma's blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Don't like, didn't like boring cheese pizza. <laughs> no ah. me gusta mucho pizza prefiere por mi nieto, solo queso. Ah. Es por todos los sabores de las cosas como pimientos, aceituno negro, champiñones, cebos, y carne. Ingredientes. Grandson, yeah, all the most ingredientes. Sí. All, all he likes is plain old cheese. Ah, <laughs> pizza con solamente queso. Yeah. Sí, ingredientes. Aburrido. Ay, esa, sí. Una pizza aburrida. Sin okay. otros ingredientes para mí, para mí, claro. Bien, es buen ejemplo, buen ejemplo. Uh, ¿Hay algo más? Mm. Para esto, no. Uh, no. Oh, quizás una franquicia de comida rápida que prefieren. Okay. Hay una franquicia. I'll put these questions back up so that you could, para, para que puedan ver, so you can see. A uh, una franquicia de comida rápida. Oh, franquicia, sí. Franquicia, franquicia is a retail chain, something that is in a lot of different cities. Mm -hmm. Starbucks. Sí. Hey. Ah, ok. Hey. Sí. Quiero Burger King. Uh, sí. Uh, me gustan sus hamburguesas. Ok, ah. vale, sí. Para algunas personas, uh, hay, hay algunas personas que prefieren a uh, McDonald's porque uh, a ellos les gustan las papas fritas, las papas sí, fritas sí, sí. de McDonald's. Sí, si sí, sí, tú no eres aficionado a, a las hamburguesas, uh, muchas veces... Uh, Casi todos dicen que sí, las papas fritas de McDonald's son excelentes. Ok. Um, prefiero, si tiene que ser uh, comida rápida, comida rápida, 
quizás algo como Panera o porque en Panera pue, puedo uh, puedo elegir ensalada o sándwich uh -huh. o sopa sí algo así algo más anything else with una franquicia de comida rápida uh, Chick Fil A uh -huh. Sí. Ok. Oh, sí, es muy popular. Eso sí, sí es muy popular. Ok. Uh, sí, Chick-fil-A. Todos dicen sí. Uh, es curioso que nunca he comido en Chick-fil-A. I have never eaten in Chick-fil-A. No sé por qué no, pero uh, no. Uh, bueno, la comida rápida que no me gusta para nada es Taco Bell. Oh. A mí no, a mí no me, a mí no me gusta, a mí no me gusta para nada Taco Bell porque la comida no es auténtica, no es comida auténtica y no me gusta para nada Taco Bell. Hay algo diferente para ustedes. Jack in the Box. Oh, Jack in the Box. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Bien. White Castle. Oh, White oh. Castle. Oh, los famosos sliders. Ick, Ick. Mm. <laughs> es muy, muy pequeño. Ay, sí, las hamburguesas son pequeñitas. Sí, son, sí, sí. Son como el, el tamaño de, de un quarter, ¿no? Son, son, son hamburguesas muy pequeñas. Pero son hamburguesas muy famosas en Chicago. Cuando yo vivía en Chicago, a todo el mundo le gustaba a uh, uh, White Castle. Sí, uh, así es. Pero son hamburguesas muy, uh, que tienen mucha grasa también. Tienen mucha grasa, mucha grasa. Ok, sí. No es un lugar para un vegetariano. Yeah. <laughs> ok, hay otra comida rápida que no les gusta para nada. No, bien. Ok, ¿cuáles son franquicias populares en tu barrio? Uh, hay muy pocas uh, franquicias en mi pueblo de Fountain Hills. No hay muchas franquicias. Uh, yo diría, I would say, mm. hypothetically, diri, yo diría, I would say, que las dos franquicias más populares en Fountain Hills son uh, um, Safeway huh. y uh, quizás Starbucks. Porque siempre hay un Starbucks, por lo menos un Starbucks, ¿sí? En cada pueblo. ¿Cuáles son franquicias populares en, en sus barrios? Your neighborhoods. So, Marilyn, I, I listed three. Okay. But, I was, but what is the easy way to explain to someone who doesn't know, like in Mexico, doesn't know what those things are. So for example, I said, um, in my barrio, uh, son, and then I said, Safeway, Alimentos, I mean, al, al, Alimentos, Starbucks, Cafe. Para Cafe. Chevron, Gasolina. Ah. Well, and so I wouldn't want to go Safeway and then explain the whole gosh darn thing. No, no, no. And then Starbucks. So can you simply pause and throw in the word just like we would do? So, you know, Starbucks, coffee, Chevron, gasoline. Ca gasolina, sí, sí, yeah. sí. Okay. Algo breve, sí. Uh, uh, se fue un supermercado, sí. Uh, sí. Starbucks, un, un café. Uh, oh. y, y, por ejemplo, sí, Chevron uh, para comprar gasolina. Y nada más, sí. Okay, so you wouldn't need to explain it. You can't get away with just throwing in the word gasoline. Okay, uh, quizás, depende, no? Por ejemplo, um, if somebody in Mexico were to uh, mention OXO to you, OXO, 
uh, es un, una franquicia muy popular en México. Okay. It is like the 7-Eleven mm -hmm. of Mexico. But for an American, they wouldn't know AXO and everybody else. Everybody, you're, you know, you're in a group of, of 50 people. You'd be the only one if you're an American who doesn't know what an AXO is because we don't have them. Right. But, mm -hmm. you know, so entonces, sí, depende. Uh, lo que, lo que <coughs> tú tienes que explicar what you have to explain, lo que tú tienes que explicar, depende en, en la popularidad ah, sí. de la franquicia, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, ah. todo el mundo uh, conoce a Starbucks. Sí. To todo el mundo. Ah. Uh, pero AXO, no. En México, sí, todo el mundo conoce a AXO. So. Ok. Ok. Bien. Um, vale, bueno, hay otras franquicias populares. Cerca de mi casa hay cuatro tipos de restaurante de pizza. ¿Cuatro? Cuatro. Wow. Uh, pizza Hut, Domino's, Papa John's y Spinatos. Ah. También hay Subway, Arby's. McDonald's y Orange Julius. Ah, casi, pero casi todas son tiendas de comida rápida. Quizás sí. no con todo, todos, uh, todos los uh, restaurantes de pizza, pero sí, así es. Muy bien, muy bien. Uh, bueno, <coughs> perdón. Um, Hay otra franquicia. Uh, otra franquicia muy popular en mi barrio es UPS Store. Ah, ¿Qué es UPS Store? UPS Store es como un correo, ¿no? Como un correo. Es un lugar para, para enviar paquetes. Sí, a cajas grandes o cajas pequeñas. Uh, y para copiar, copiar uh, uh, varios uh, documentos, varios documentos, okay. así, y eso sí es muy popular también. Uh, bueno, ok. ¿Cuáles son las recetas que se hacen con carne desmechada? Carne desmechada. ¿Y de dónde son las recetas? ¿En where are those recipes from? Porque tenemos muchas recetas aquí en Estados Unidos que son populares, ¿no? Sí, sí. Las recetas que se hicieron carne desmechada de donde Texas y sur y sur ah. en Estados Unidos. Sí, muchas recetas de Texas y sí. del sur de Estados Unidos, sí. como Mississippi, Alabama, sí, de, de los estados al sur de nuestro país. La carne desmechada es muy popular, como en pulled pork, en barbacoa, la barbacoa, barbacoa es un término muy general, ¿no? pero eh, la barbacoa es muy popular en Texas, en muchas, uh, uh, muchos estados de Estados Unidos. Así es, sí. Uh, y uh, en muchos restaura uh, restaurantes de Tex-Mex, ¿no? Uh -huh. Aquí, porque la comida mexicana es tan popular en Arizona, aquí en nuestro estado. Entonces hay un montón de restaurantes donde se sirven a uh, carne desmechada uh, en la comida mexicana especialmente y la barbacoa. Uh, bueno, uh, ¿algo más o no? Uh, Marilyn, um, sí. would it be uh, cerdo desmechada, pulled pork o just carne? Oh, ah. Uh, Ah, sí, cerdo desmechado. Mm -hmm. Cer muy, 
Muy cerdo, popular. cerdo, sí, sí, el cerdo desmechado, ah. porque cerdo, cerdo. desmechado, sí. Ah, eh, a veces se expresa como carne de cerdo, carne mm. de cerdo desmechada, sí, está bien, cerdo desmechado, está bien, sí. Uh, you'll hear people using both carne uh, uh, de cerdo or just cerdo. Mm. Or puerco. Sometimes just puerco. Mm. Depende. Depends on the region. Okay. Uh, ¿Algo más con la carne desmechada? Muy popular. Okay. ¿Cuál es su bebida de preferencia por la mañana y con la cena? Por la mañana prefiero café, ¿sí? Y con la cena, pues, depende. Hay muchas bebidas uh, que me gustan. Uh, ¿Qué prefieren ustedes? Mm. Su bebida de pre preferencia. Me, pref me prefiere té caliente y uh, jugo de toronja para el desayuno. Ok. Y té caliente o té con hielo y limón durante el día. Bien. Y con la cena se depende. Ok, bien. Entonces, eres aficionada al té. Sí. 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 Eres aficionada al té. Uh, bien, otras ideas. Por la mañana bebo jugo de arándano. Ah, bien, sí. Es buen jugo, sí. Es un jugo muy fuerte, ¿no? Muy fuerte, un sabor muy fuerte. It's got a strong flavor, ¿no? Sí, bien. Sí. Ah, vale, es interesante que mis hijos no prefieren el café. No toman café. Nunca. No toman café. No. Uh, hay muchos jóvenes cuando cuando era profesora en el colegio en mi pueblo uh, había había mucha gente había muchos adolescentes uh, que tomaban um, Red Bull Yeah. Tomaban, oh, no. sí, That's tomaban like a uh, bebidas energéticas por la mañana. Uh, o, oh, por ejemplo, uh, había muchos adolescentes que tomaban Coca-Cola, mm. una Coca-Cola por la mañana. Sí. Yeah. Uh, muy pocos tomaban un café. Algunos pero una minoría del grupo. Bien. Uh, bueno, ¿algo más de las bebidas o no? No, nada. Ok, bien. Uh, bueno, vamos a ver. Uh, I do want to show you one kind of interesting little video, but we're going to kind of skip and jump through it because not all of it is probably something that you have to watch. Some of it gets a little too basic, but some of it is very, very helpful. Uh, you may have noticed, I hope you did, I had sent you two shorter videos on talking about el café, coffee with, mm -hmm. in Colombia, mm -hmm. and then the Spanish terms, and there were differences, were there not? Uh, el vocabulario de la comida, um, hay gran variedad de esa comida, de, de la comida. Uh, uh, there are great differences in how people talk about uh, various types of foods and drinks. It is one of the most variable vocabulary sets because there are a lot of regional differences. People even, even within the same country may use very different terms for the same thing depending on where you are in that country. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like the debate of, do you call it soda or pop in the United States? Uh, kind of like that. You know, how do you know what to use? Sometimes the answer is you listen for what the locals say. 
So a veces es así. Sometimes that's just what you do. Um, this is a nice little video and I'll, I'll let you watch the whole thing um, uh, at home only because this is specific to Mexico. Es un video que tiene uh, tiene um, algunos trucos. It's got a few uh, little tricks for, you know, specifically if you're in Mexico. So in Mexico, you're not going to walk in and ask for a tinto uh, when you want the coffee, like you do in Colombia. Um, uh, in Spain, I got very used to it was always, you know, cafe solo or cafe cortado. And they sometimes they just called it un cortado. Uh, but in Mexico, there are some slightly different terms used. And some of these have to do with either the terms for the food or even in the way you pay or even in the way you order. So we're going to skip around a little bit, although I'll give you the link to the full thing if you'd like to watch all of it. I'm hoping to cut out the parts that are too simplistic because they want people to get used to kind of repeating some of these terms back. But some of these were helpful. Um, I think the first part is going to be in the ordering segment here. Ah, see, sí, my, okay. Now, some of the most common alternative. Oh, okay. Perdón. All right. For part two of yeah. the conversation. How Listen you to my. Now, a lot of people are very, very particular when they talk about ordering a coffee. What kind of, you know, because you got your vegan people, you got your vegetarian people. You got people who just, you know, don't do any milk at all. I order her so. drink. We'll also talk about other common types of milk you can order for your drinks. ¿Puedo tomar su orden? Sí, gracias. Bueno, tengo una pregunta. ¿Tienes alguna leche vegetal? Claro que sí. Contamos con leche de almendra, leche de coco, o podría ser crema de coco también. Oh, ok. Bueno, entonces va a ser un chai de especias. De chai de especias, spice chai. And they don't change that chai. It's still chai. ¿Y me lo puedes hacer con leche de almendra? Así es. El chai sería frío, caliente o en frappé. Caliente, por favor. De acuerdo. Caliente. Y sería todo por ahorita. ¿Gusta que le retire la carta o se la dejo por ser de otra cosa? Ah, pues déjamela ver si se me antoja algo más. De acuerdo. Enseguida vuelvo. Ok, now they're going to break no, that down. Wow, did that feel like super fast? <laughs> yeah. that feel like super fast? Yeah, sí. That was, yeah. See, sí, that was kind of super fast. They're going to break it down a little bit. So one of the nice things about this video is that they give you what it was, and then they're going to put in some subtitles so you can see what they were saying in Spanish along with that, and they'll slow it down and define it a little bit more. So they're going to go back and do that. But she's going to break down what these choices are first before they go back and review that segment of the conversation. Most common alternative milks that are in Mexico are soya, soya. soy, almendra, almendra, almond, and coco, coconut. And here's where they'll slow it down for you. ¿Puedo tomar su orden? Sí, gracias. ¿Puedo tomar su orden? May I take your order? Ah, bien. Sí. Gracias. Okay. Fácil. Means, easy. yes, <laughs> thank you. Bueno, tengo una pregunta. Bueno, tengo una pregunta. Well, I have a question. ¿Tienes alguna leche vegetal? Claro que sí, contamos con leche de almendra, leche de coco, o podría ser crema de coco también. ¿Tienes alguna leche vegetal? Do you have any plant-based milk? So that's not vegetable milk. You wouldn't say that in English, would you? Oh. Yeah. No. And, and you probably won't even say plant-based, right? But, uh, you know, she wants to know the other, not something that's not milk, milk, leche. Okay? So, leche vegetal. Other types of milk you may want to order for your drinks are... Entera. Whole. Oh, muy importante. Here we get into that whole is skimmed thing. Mm -hmm. Entera means entire. Well, that's whole milk. Yeah. Entire, entera means entire. So it's the whole shebang, right? Whole milk. Light. 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 Ah. Deslactosada. Lactose free. Claro que sí. This means, of course, or sure thing. 
Here, the waiter said, Contamos con. Here is something that's interesting. This is something a waiter saying, Contamos con. And, ooh, contar is to tell a story or to count one, two, three. Mm-hmm. Count with? What the heck is that guy talking about? Well, contamos con. We count on this stuff. He's just t- telling you when, when they start with the contamos con, they're going to give you the list of things they have. All right. What they carry. Think think of, of contamos con as, you know, we carry these products. Think of it that way. Instead of saying tenemos. He could say tenemos, but some people will throw in a different verb and that verb could be contamos con. Which simply means we have. The full phrase he said was, Contamos con leche de almendra, leche de coco, o podría ser crema de coco también. Which means, we have almond milk, coconut milk, or it could also be coconut cream. Oh, ok. Bueno, entonces va a ser un chai de especias. De acuerdo. Y me lo puedes hacer con leche de almendra. Así es. Here, my said. Entonces va a ser. And this is very commonly used to say it's going to be what you're going to order. Ok. You, yeah, sí. Sí, una pregunta, por favor. Um, can you use. Yebamos, uh, we carry? Uh, oh, no. No. Que buena pregunta. That's a very that, good that, question. That, sí, porque llevar es carry. But, but that doesn't mean that we have it here. No, no. Uh, it could mean a certain dish has it. Um, entonces, uh, por ejemplo, sí. Um, Este vaso lleva agua y jugo especial, ¿sí? Yeah. So, lleva for ingredients, but to say we carry something as this is on our menu, no. Only llevar with what's within what what the dish is made with. Ingredientes, yeah. Okay. Buena pregunta. So, right, in English, en, en inglés... Ah, sería muy, um, muy común decir, we carry these brands of soda. You know, we carry Pepsi, but, pero no es llevar. En ese caso, in that case, it is not llevar. Okay, uh, yeah. Which means, uh, tenemos aquí. Ten- oh, tenemos aquí, tenemos, sí, está bien. Tenemos is fine, sí. Uh, uh, but, pero contamos con, contamos con is, you know, we have these things. It's just a different way of expressing tenemos. That's all it is. Uh, now, when you're on the ordering side, the va a ser is uh, kind of an impersonal use. Uh, oh, it'll be da 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 da. My order will be, it's kind of like my order is going to be, va a ser, because va a ser is not voy a ser, I'm not going to be anything, right? But you're saying basically my order is going to be, va a ser, and the it is going to be is the va a, va a ser, it's going to be, it'll be. Then it's going to be, the full phrase is, bueno, entonces va a ser un chai de especias. Well, then it's going to be a spiced chai. And then she asked, ¿Me lo puedes hacer con leche de almendra? Oh, for me, it, can you make, (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's the order that would be pretty common. ¿Me lo puedes hacer? Can you make it for me? Can you make it for me? But remember the... Mm -hmm the objects are going to often come first. Uh, you could say, puedes hacérmelo, but it's really, really common for it to come out like with those pronouns in front. Me lo puedes hacer. Can you make it with almond milk? El chai sería frío, caliente, o en frappe? Caliente, por favor. De acuerdo. Caliente. Y sería todo por ahorita. Así es. El chai sería frío, Caliente o en frappe. And this is a seria that translates as that hypothetical. Uh, the, the 
Chai would be cold, hot, or frappe. All right, so he wants to know what temperature we're doing for this drink. And here is that idea of would be, seria. That's what they call conditional tense. All right, so he's asking what she would like. Of course, would the chai be cold, hot, or frappe? Caliente, por favor. Hot, please. Y sería todo por ahorita. And that would be all for now. Gusta que le retire la carta o se la dejo por si ordena otra cosa? Ah, pues déjame la ver si se me antoja algo más. De acuerdo, ese quedó bueno. Here, the waiter asked, ¿Gusta que le retire la carta o se la dejo por si ordena otra cosa? And the important word for you to catch in this here is retire. Retire looks like retire, retire. retire. <laughs> and it kind of is but in a really convoluted way in english so uh whenever somebody asks to take something away uh, retirar is to withdraw okay so literally they're asking may i take the menu back yeah so if you take it back or take it away it's retirar Okay, uh, gusta que le retire la carta. Uh, y la carta es como menú, right? La carta and menú are the same thing, uh, a menu. So whenever you hear retire, that means they want to take that away. They may use that same verb retire when they ask if they want to take your plate. If you're sitting there eating and you're almost done and you hear a lot of things and then you hear retire, they want to know if they can take your plate away. You know, are you What's done with that first, plate? What's the first word in that? Is that gusta? Is that a G or a C? It's a G. It's a G. It went up C. Gusta. And right. they left okay. off the, the she, he, he didn't say le gusta or te gusta. He just said it as gusta. You may hear that. And you may hear it as le gusta or on a familiar level if they're speaking as a tu, if they're doing the tu te ar thing with you, it may be te gusta. But they may just leave it as gusta, kind of naked out there. Gusta. Uh, uh, si, uh, se la dejo uh, por si ordena otra cosa. Should I leave it so you can order something else? Okay. Bien. Which means, do you want me to take away the menu or should I leave it in case you want to order something else? Déjamela. A ver si se me antoja algo más. And here is a phrase that you hear a lot. Se me antoja. Se me antoja. Uh, I might feel like. I might feel like. I might, I might feel like having is se me antoja. Okay. Uh, Dejamela is leave it with me. Dejar is to leave, but not as in go out. Dejar is to leave something behind. So déjame la means leave it with me. And the la is la carta, the, el menú, right? Uh, and you're leaving it for me. So déjame la, leave it for me. Sí. Um, a ver si se me antoja. Se me antoja is if I feel like if I get a yen for adding something else to it. All right. Se me antoja. Leave it here, in case I feel like having something else. Enseguida vuelvo. That's pretty common. I'll be right back. So some other drinks that you might want to order are this. ¿Me traes un café americano? Another very common phrase for ordering food and drinks is... ¿Me traes? Notice how it's said with a rising intonation at the end of the sentence. This and the me traes is like, it's an implied, por favor, me traes. Will you bring me? Okay, and it's looked at as polite, even if you forget the por favor, me traes is looked at as polite when you ask it as a question. Me traes, me traes, and your, your inflection should go up. It literally means, can you bring me? Me traes un café americano? Can you bring me a black coffee? A 
Café americano. In Spanish-speaking countries, varies from place to place. In some coffee shops, an americano is a shot of espresso with extra hot water. In other places, it's simply coffee grounds brewed in a regular coffee machine. So like regular coffee that we Te encargo un cappuccino, por favor. Te encargo un cappuccino. Ooh, and here's a te encargo, and she's going to explain later. This is like more specific to Mexico. Te encargo is kind of like saying, uy, encargar is to put somebody in charge of. Uh, I'd like to put you in charge of doing this for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, can, I, can I ask you to bring this? Okay. Uh, te encargo un cappuccino. Can I get a cappuccino? So can I give you the job of doing this for me? All right. You're doing it. Uh, or uh, Yeah. You're doing this for me. Te encargo. Can I get a cappuccino? Te encargo un shot de espresso. Sería cortado, macchiato, o solamente la carga de espresso? Solamente la carga de espresso. Te encargo un shot de... And notice shot. Yeah, shot. We, we just pronounce it shot. That's what they do, okay? It's been borrowed from English, so e they pronounce expresso. it as if it were Spanish. Can I get a shot of espresso? Sería cortado, macchiato, o solamente... La carga de expreso. Would it be with milk, macchiato, or just the shot of espresso? So one word I want to point out is that cortado word. Cortado literally comes from cortar, to cut. And what happens when you're adding milk to the coffee? You're cutting the coffee, right? If somebody cuts your drink of booze, they're putting a lot of water in, right? If they're cutting the liquor, it means they're watering it down. So cortado means the coffee is watered down, but it's talking about putting milk in there. So cortado always means with milk added, okay? Café con leche actually adds more milk than a cortado, but cortado puts in a decent amount of milk, okay? Uh, café con leche, you get a larger yet percentage of milk, but notice how espresso and espresso were used interchangeably. This is common in Spanish, and either one will work just fine. But the Real Academia Española ah. recommends using <laughs> espresso. For okay, uh, Italians do not apparently. It is said that Italians do not like espresso being spelled with an e x but they find this very distasteful as Italians because it is E-S-S, -S. but uh, the Spaniards kind of don't care and its pronunciation is so close anyway. For most Everybody situations. knows what you mean. Te encargo un cold brew, por favor. De acuerdo. Te encargo un cold brew, por favor. Can I get a cold brew, please? La tisana la puedes hacer fría? Sí, la podemos hacer fría. Okay. Te encargo una de fresa y kiwi? Gusta que le agregue un poco de miel? Sin miel, por favor. Sin miel, de acuerdo. A tisana is a drink made with herbs or fruit. Now, you may not find that in all countries, but she is making this very specific to Mexico, the typical, uh, typical coffee shop in Mexico. Kind of like a tea, but without caffeine. So mm -hmm. here, the phrase was... La tisana la puedes hacer fría? Can the herbal tea be made cold? Sí. Si La podemos hacer fría. Yes, we can make it cold. Te encargo una de fresa y kiwi. Can I get a strawberry kiwi one? Gusta que le agregue un poco de miel. Would you like me to add a bit of honey? Gusta. Would you like? And notice they drop the te or the le, but some people Agregue. will do that. Comes from the verb agregar, which means to add or to put. Miel is honey. Sin miel, gracias. Without honey, thanks. Now you probably heard that I said 
este encargo. Now, so here's where she's going to talk about ordering. Esto sí es importante. This is an important little segment. So I want to make sure you pay attention to this. That's a very common phrase here in Mexico, but it might not be so common in other countries. So it really depends on the place where you are. Maybe you want to go to a restaurant first and listen to what other people are using. And so look, it's okay to do that. Listen to what people are using in that area. Te encargo will be very, es muy común en México. If you're in a different country, they may not use te encargo so much. She's going to give you alternatives. Then go with that. Now we have talked about this phrase in another video, which we're going to link here in the card above. Also, you can simply say me traes. Me das. Me traes, me das. Those are really common. So all of these ordering phrases, it would be good to put those in uh, a list here and there for your gold book. Uh, me traes with question marks. Yeah. Me traes, would you bring me for ordering anything, whether it's drink or food? Me traes, literally, will you bring me? Me das, will you give me? Very common. In Colombia, one thing they gave you from the Colombian thing was me regalas. Regalar is to give a gift and you're paying. Yeah? yeah. But me regalas is common in Colombia. You wouldn't use the regalas as much in Mexico. So you can see where there are all these little regional variations. But me traes, me das, will you, could you give me? Right. And she's going to explain. Uh, something else actually even in spain it's very common to add me traes me das me pones me pones it's kind of like saying put it in front of me me pones but that one i think is more of a spain thing less of a mexico thing me pones um that's kind of almost makes me uh, remember the like little phrases you could uh, you would hear in the old uh, in the movies about the old West, you know, the guy had belly up to the bar and, hey, put it in front of me. Well, yeah, me pones is what you will hear in Spain. So different verbs might be used for Quiero ordering. Quiero sounds a little bit more, mm, not rude, but maybe more direct. So quiero is considered super direct. And notice she kind of pauses and says, well, not rude, but you can tell it's sort of borderline. <laughs> Quiero is very direct and really businesslike and sounds kind of harsh. Mm -hmm. So quiero is probably, if you're in for a friendly cup of coffee, you don't want to lead off with quiero, I want. Marilyn? Mm -hmm. Sorry to ask, but no. she's, not, you, she's not used por favor anywhere. And that's something that I've always been told <clears throat> as a cushion. And the other sí. thing, instead of uh, quiero, you'd say, uh, quisiera, por favor, sí. uh, I would like. It, it, again, it's, it's a softer. It, it, quisiera is the softest of the soft. Quisiera. Uh, quisiera, I would like. Quisiera, uh, quisiera un café. And that is fine. Quisiera es muy formal. Quisiera is very formal. Now, I want you to notice something, Esteban, about this, because it is kind of telling that you're right. You have not heard a por favor. You will hear por favor uh, a little bit later. We won't get to the whole end of the video, but you will hear a por favor when we get to the uh, paying segment. Uh, and it might seem a little odd to you, like, well, shouldn't I be polite? If in doubt, always throw in a porfa. There's another cut off one. Yeah. Porfa. Instead of por favor. Porfa. Throw in a porfa or por favor. Always okay. Why do you think she's not doing this? Vale la pena. It is worth it to think about that. Why is she not? Any thoughts? I think she's a regular customer there. Right? And she's, they're very familiar with each other. Mm. Podría, podría ser, it could be. She is very young. When you are young with very young waiters and waitresses, amongst the 20 somethings and youngers, uh, that level of familiarity is much more pronounced. So, you know, honestly, for us, para nosotros como adultos, 
a veces es, es algo distinto. It really is something very different quite often for those of us who are adults. Uh, but um, amongst, amongst the young set of 30 and down, um, you may hear a little bit less of the por favor if they're in a young crowd, but it'll be a uh, me das, uh, especially in Mexico, me das, uh, in Colombia, me regalas, me traes. And, and, and it's always said with that up intonation, me trae, me traes un café americano. Yeah, not, uh, me traes un café. Yeah, the, how you say that, that, that pitch that you use does matter. And when you pitch it as a question, there will be a lot of people, especially in the young set, who drop the por favor. Es así, that does happen. Mexicans, we're not all that direct. We like to sugarcoat phrases and make them a little bit more um, maybe polite. So you could also say quiero, but it's more common to say other phrases. Okay, so the- Carolyn, real yeah. quick question. Sí, sí, um, dime. It, could you, if you were like at, at, a, at the cashier, could you just say something like, uh, Un café solo, por favor? Or would that be considered rude? Uh, or no, I no. Know what the heck you're it, talking about? No. Uh, uh, es buena pregunta. That's a good question. Uh, would it be considered rude? No. But um, especially if you're up at an ordering bar. Right. Yeah. Um, and especially if there's a line of people behind you. Mm -hmm. Part of it is you have to also take your cue from the situation. She's in a sit down mm -hmm. area. So you have a little more time, you have a little more face time with that, you know, mesero or mesera. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, if you're ordering in line uh, and you're right at the point, your, your order and you pay at the same point, sometimes they like to keep it moving okay. a little bit more. So as long as you throw in a por favor, then it's good. And if you ask it as a question, mm -hmm. it's always good because okay. then sometimes that por favor is kind of implied. But for those of us who are older adults, it really is a good idea to include the por favor. I would always do it. Es mi hábito. It is my habit. Incluir un... un Ah, por favor, sí. Uh, uh, quisiera, quisiera, I will tell you if you're ordering in a busy place uh, where you're not seated is too formal. Because quisiera is the absolute most polite, softest, cushioniest, cushiest. Please, would you do this? And so it really depends on the situation you're in. If you're moving along pretty quickly, Quisiera would seem be seen as kind of super formal, but you know nobody's going to think you're you're weird for using it. It's just going to sound like a little overly formal. I'm just thinking where I would go up and every Spanish word would fall out of my head except for cafe. <laughs> okay, yeah, for the coffee. Yeah, hey, but but now look, <laughs> this really is not hard. And notice. She was doing the tutear. She was doing the tu thing back and forth because there were a couple of young people. And that is really, really common. So me das, me das, me das is two syllables. Me das, me das un café, por favor. Me das un café, por favor. Me traes, me traes. Okay, yeah, it's almost three syllables. Me traes. Me traes un café, por favor. Yeah, uh, it's not that much to add on to your desired food or beverage, right? Me das, me traes. And said as a question, you, yeah, uh, pitching up at the end is seen as polite, but I would include the por favor if I were you, see? Si? Uh, bien, okay, está bien. Are we good? And we're right at the, ooh, we're at our 7.30 point. What I'm going to do, she is going to talk about Wi-Fi and that is super, super helpful. I'm going to sign that. So you watch the end of that. She, they're going to talk about two more items here. One is Wi-Fi. En España se pronuncia Wi-Fi. Es muy importante. In Spain, everybody says Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. They 
make that very phonetic wiki. But in Mexico, it is very common to say it as Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, like we say it. So uh, if you're closer yeah, to the border, it's Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, they're going to uh, so when you want to know uh, how to get into the Wi-Fi, that means you're asking for a password. They're going to talk about that, and they're going to talk about paying. And there's one little extra thing I want you to notice about paying with a card. I want you to notice it because um, some places will bring you the little the little machine right to your table. And uh, some of that I think is a response to people being really concerned about that card leaving your table. <laughs> and now, you know, maybe your number is out there and people don't like that. So they're going to talk about the payment thing and the Wi-Fi thing. Bien? Vale? Bien. Bien. Okay. I want to take just two minutes uh, more. Dos minutos más. Um, uh, I want to give you an assignment and I'll, I'll put this in a nice little slide thing for you to go in and access it. Uh, I want you to talk about some prices things. I want you to find, we tengo que, tengo que ver. I need to look up my exact, oop, my exact uh, issues here. So you have an idea of what you're going to be doing. I'm going to send you more specifics in the recap email, but pero, pero, para conversar la próxima semana, uh, para conversar, uh, I want you guys to uh, think about some price issues and kind of revisit some, um, uy, donde esta? Tengo que buscar mis apuntes. Ah, aquí está. Here it is. I want you to think, uh, I want you to, this will take some tracking through the week. Okay. So save that receipt. The next time you go out to eat or run into the grocery store, save that receipt and just stick it someplace in your house. When you come to class, I want you to talk about the three best prices you found on some kind of item whether it's your whole meal or something you bought at the store, the three best prices that you got in the coming week that you will get in the coming week and the three worst prices you got in the coming week. And I guess you could include your gas, la gasolina, en una gasolinera, I guess at the, you, yeah, I guess we could include that too. So I want you to talk about three items, what those items were and what the price was, where you snag that deal, una ganga, a bargain, y algo que no es barato para nada, and something that is not cheap at all. So your absolute highest price and your absolute lowest. Tres, tres y tres, tres y tres, ¿sí? Uh, and then I also want you to talk a little bit about whether or not you use the self-checkout. So I'm going to send you those questions specifically uh, this week. There's going to be a little fun um, Luisito video to uh, uh, watch. It's going to sound really fast, but slow him down and uh, put on the closed caption. And if you just get the gist of it, that'll be good enough. I'll give you a fast story video and a slow story video, something easy. Um, oh, last, last item, very, very last item, sign up for fall is going to start on the 25th. So if you did not get a booklet, but you do everything exclusively online, that's fine. But uh, registration begins July 25th, I believe. Will that be Monday? Si, sí, el lunes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, si, sí, yes. um, uh, 26, 26th for people who are outside of the city limits of Scottsdale. So if you're a non-Scottsdale resident, it'll be the 26th. Mm -hmm. And it is going to be that split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Half fall and yet yeah, two sessions in fall. So if you only signed up for one thing in fall, that means you get September through like Halloween and November through December to Christmas is considered separate fall. Uh, so, okay, así es, so it is. Bien?
Si hay alguna pregunta, díganme más tarde. You know, if you got any kind of question, let me know later. Email me. We're all good. Okay. Todo bien. Yeah. Sí. 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 Todo, sí. todo bien.